Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has reviewed his last annual military parade as head of state of Iran. That role will go to someone else on the 8th of June. These occasions have for him always been about threatening the enemy of the United States and Israel. This last time, a week ago, he likened Israel's talk about striking Iranian nuclear sites to the harmless barking of a dog. A few days later, the U.S. Defense Secretary was visiting the region, partly with a sample case, so to speak, of weapons to sell to allies, notably Israel, but also to the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. This was Chuck Hagel's way of sending Tehran a very clear signal. Neither side's rhetoric has evolved much, nor have talks involving the International Atomic Energy Watchdog. Another round of those talks is scheduled for mid-May. Diplomatic negotiations with the major Western powers are also still in the doldrums. And far from putting its nuclear program to sleep, as these powers are urging, Tehran has stirred it up. Two new uranium mines were brought online earlier this month to supply enrichment centrifuges. Iran's ambassador to the UN nuclear watchdog agency has not offered specifics on how Iran could move to a cooperative dialogue with the West, which has demanded concrete Iranian action to allay international concern that it is trying to develop the means to produce nuclear weapons. The ambassador said Iran will pursue all legal areas of nuclear technology exclusively for peaceful purposes. He said on Tuesday, hostile policies of Western countries, including sanctions and talks policies, are doomed to failure. Europe and the U.S. have toughened oil and banking sanctions on the Islamic Republic, adding to its currency problems. Prices on imported basic foods have been affected the most, as inflation has risen above 30 percent. But that hasn't made Tehran back down. Ahmadinejad can't run again for president. He has served his maximum two terms. Whoever wins will inherit an economic and diplomatic ruin. But experts say that won't much change Iran's policy on its nuclear program. A conference to discuss the process of the non-proliferation treaty known as NPT started in Geneva on Monday. Iran, as usual, was a topic of discussion. On the first day of the conference, chief U.S. delegate to the talks, Thomas Countryman, said Iran's nuclear program poses the greatest threat to the credibility of the NPT. Euronews spoke to Deputy Secretary of the Iranian National Security Council, Ali Bagheri, who's taking part in the conference. Whilst Iran is a signatory to the NPT, what could be the reasons for the West's lack of trust? And why does the U.S. say Iran poses the biggest threat to the credibility of the NPT? In the past, some Western countries, including America, have adopted an illogical approach which shows that they are, in fact, against the Iranian people benefiting from their rights, including their rights as envisaged in the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency at Iranian nuclear facilities, as well as the continuous supervision of the IAEA, leave no grounds for concerns over the nuclear activities of Iran. The same situation as other countries who have this type of peaceful nuclear activities under the supervision of the agency. Mr. Bagheri, international politics and diplomacy is described as an arena for giving and taking. But how can we justify the economic and political price that Iran is paying and the increased scrutiny it's coming under because of the uranium enrichment program? For example, after the recent bombings in Boston, Canada has arrested two people they say are related to al-Qaeda elements in Iran. This is is exact proof of the illogical approach of some of these Western countries. I remember when the European Union was about to take the MK, the Mujahideen Kalk organization, off the EU's list of terrorist groups. At the time, we were trying to tell EU officials that this small group is a terrorist organization and it's committed terrorist crimes. The EU blatantly told us that as long as you do not work with us and do not step back, we will use the other means that we have against you. There's a long history of the attitude of some Western countries towards the Islamic Republic of Iran. One of the reasons for their failure in dealing with issues regarding Iran is their lack of knowledge about such issues and their miscalculation. 
calculations. Anybody who's familiar with the basics of Shiism and Salafism knows that these two schisms not only have no common ground, but they also have very serious differences. Iran will soon have a new president and a new government. In your opinion, will the new president and government adopt a different approach regarding the nuclear issue or not? And if there's going to be a change, will such a decision be taken by the government or, as it said, by the Iranian leadership, Ayatollah Saeed al Khamenei? I am confident that the presidential elections can open a new door towards the nuclear issue and the Islamic Republic of Iran can have more strength with regard to nuclear talks and nuclear activities. I'm also confident that Iran will present itself with power and authorities in new areas. Iran shows its readiness for cooperation with other countries, including the group of world powers currently in talks with Iran, in different areas, including the nuclear issue.